Hello everyone, it's great to have you all here. Uh, myself Vikram, I'm a solutions architect at HCL for blockchain technologies. So I've been living blockchain for last four years. I you know, try to be you know, active in the community as well, uh, being part of Hyperledger India chapter and, you know, so, and uh, Hyperledger challenge and or Hyperledger mentorship. So I've been you know, working in blockchain and you know, uh, trying to provide solutions to customers across the globe, across the industry. And now, you know, this, uh, I, I would say if, since last one year, you know, the metaverse has come up and, you know, I see it quite linked with blockchain. Although, you know, uh, so we will talk about that, you know, how metaverse is being perceived and how we perceive it and, you know, how it can be, uh, you know, implemented uh, with SSI tokenomics, right, using blockchain. So that is my topic for today. So. I was supposed to be joined by my colleague, but due to some unforeseen circumstances, I'm sure that you know he is with us, you know, virtually. So to start with, how do we see metaverse? So we essentially perceive metaverse as a necessary step towards evolution. So enterprises, not organizations, enterprises, you know, have wanted to improve customer experience, right? Uh, it started with in-person, you know. It's not easy to acquire customers, as you all know, right? So enterprises, you know, started, uh, you know, wanted to give better experience to their customers. So uh, it started with in-person. Then, you know, uh, the mobile came into picture. The emails came into picture. The web came into picture. So they had to, you know, customize that, you know, so make their, improve, you know, experience better on those platforms. And then came the chatbots, right? So uh, that allowed those enterprises to connect with their customers more in person right but then the metaverse which is actually you know the next level of or the next evolution of channel applications right because it provides them with an opportunity to connect with them in person without being limited by you know their presence across the globe right wherever they are so essentially we are moving from flat screens to head mounted displays 2d applications to 3d environments so and you know, here is the market outlook of how you know uh, many of those analysts and experts see or perceive you know uh, metaverse growing, right? So, for example, in uh, 2021 itself, you know, 13 billion dollars were invested into you know uh, venture capital funds for metaverse. If this year itself, you know, in the first five months, there was about investment of 120 billion dollars. So that's a significant, you know, improvement over the last year, right? And then, you know, uh, some analysts have, you know, uh, put up as a figure as big as $5 trillion by 2030 as an impact of metaverse, right? And when it comes to the users, you know, uh, whether it's healthcare or gaming, 59% of the users want to experience uh, metaverse, while 79% of the people spent their money, you know, bought something just because they wanted to experience Metaverse. So they went into Metaverse and they wanted to buy something. So around 79%, a big figure, right? So that's what, you know, customers are being translated, right? So they have bought something. And then, you know, it's also perceived that by 2030, 50% of the events, maybe, you know, by 2030, you know, we all uh, at Global Forum would be meeting virtually and in person, I suppose, right? And connecting with each other, the networking would also happen that way. So that is how, you know, I believe, you know, it would move out. So when it comes to, you know, what all makes Metaverse? So there are, you know, various components. There could be, you know, these are some of them because it's Metaverse, right? So Metaverse meaning it is a replica of the world, you know, of the real world. So that means, you know, n number of components can come into picture. But essentially, AI is important because that would give you that, you know, human behavior. How, you know, you react in the real world, you know, imitating the same uh, in the virtual world, so that is where you need, you know, artificial intelligence because not everything can be coded, right? Second part is you need AR, VR for the immersive experience to feel that, you know, real, like, you know, image. Then you need Web3, right, uh, for decentralization. You need, uh, you know, blockchain to manage your assets, identify them. Identity is very important. It could be your centralized identity or it could be, a, you know, self-sovereign identity as we will talk about, you know, during the course of this. Then, you know, uh, uh, apart from, you know, managing assets, you need trust. So that trust can come from blockchain because you could manage assets, you know, we have been managing assets without blockchain as well. 
but with blockchain comes the trust right and then you know uh, then comes the infrastructure part infrastructure would have your network you know 5g that would help us a lot then you we need those edge devices and not just edge devices we need secure edge devices so maybe you know we will venture into confidential computing trusted execution environments right and then you know uh, we need 3d content creation right so these uh, so you would need tools to actually map out the spaces uh, the layouts right so that's where the, the 3d content creation would come into picture and finally human interface now human interface sounds a bit different but why human interface because that UX approach, the human-based UX approach is required if you are building uh, this. Because you know, uh, when we started with you know Web 2.0, when or you know when we started creating applications, the idea was to sell. Okay, you know, I'm selling you this. Or maybe the idea was that you know because there are less middlemen involved, or maybe no middlemen involved, uh, you'll get things for cheaper because you know the infrastructure cost was low. But then came the idea that, okay, you know, yes, you know, we are doing that, but competition is also doing that. So we should provide them better experience, right? So they started with human-centric approach or, you know, the, the design thinking approach. So that is what is again needed when you're designing a metaverse components. So now coming on to the world of possibilities, obviously they are endless, you know, what we can do in this world, I don't think, you know, we can catalog it. It's not that easy to do. And, you know, if we start cataloging, I think it would be years before, you know, we could catalog what all, you know, as people we can do and what are the opportunities. But at this juncture, at this point, you know, uh, looking at some of those sectors, uh, looking at, you know, life sciences. So in life sciences, first is collaborative working. So that is very much required because, you know, collaboration would mean that, you know, you, you are again not limited by, you know, with your geo presence. So uh, collaboration would be quite easier and, you know, creating, you know, digital twins and, you know, uh, working with those health workers. And then second is education. Getting education from a celebrity, celebrity you know, surgeon or a celebrity doctor. We would all want that, right? So you will have access to them, you know, those experts you will have access to. And not just, you know, over a call or, you know, over a you know, video conference, but you could actually do things with them, right? Using Metaverse, you can actually operate on a, you know, dummy, right? You could actually do that. So you can learn from the expert that, okay, how to go about this. And that can't be just taught in 2D or flat screen videos. So that is where, you know, the application is coming up. You know, uh, we are working with, you know, uh, some of those companies towards these solutions. Then clinical care, wellness. Wellness is, you know, a very good example. Because, you know, I know that I get, you know, call from my, you know, uh, uh, her wellness, you know, uh, consultant. So uh, she calls me up and, you know, questions me, okay, how are you doing? Are you, you know, are you maintaining your weight? Are you eating good? Are you doing this? So I don't know, I, not all the questions I answer, you know, truthfully, because, you know, it's not easy to lie, right? So, but still, you know, we try to. Uh, so that can be avoided, you know, that, uh, you know, because if, you know, it was happening in metaverse, you could actually see, right? I'm not saying that, you know, my avatar, but, you know, the real life, you know, persona, if you could develop using IoT and edge devices, if the sensors were there, they would give her the true value. So that is what I'm talking about, that, you know, my BMI, not what I'm saying my BMI is, but my actual BMI, you know, using those sensors, if that goes out to her, so that, that way, you know, they can better coach me. So my wellness coach can help me. But yes, right now we are limited. So that is a good scope, you know, when it comes to metaverse. Then moving on to banking and insurance. Banking, you know, any new innovation that comes in, you know, finance, you know, FS industry is always there first, right? So banking, you know, because they, they deal with, you know, so much money. So essentially, you know, virtual banks are coming up. But yes, no, uh, there are certain challenges also, uh, you know, not just that opportunities, but some of the, you know, banks have, you know, challenge around regulations that, okay, uh, regulations are still not clear. But still, you know, there are workarounds and there are still, you know, things that banks can achieve. For example, banks are coming up with lounges where they can, you know, at least meet their clients, greet their clients, explain them a few things, not sell them, maybe explain them, right? So those lounges are helping them. Then, you know, uh, obviously, you know, the account opening can still be done. Um, obviously, regulations are a challenge, but at least, you know, they can start giving that experience. They can, st they can start getting on board, right? So with blockchain, they have, you know, option of KYC. 
so uh, we'll see in a you know uh, in a demo you know later during the you know this presentation but essentially you could they could do you know use uh, they can open up new accounts they can do kyc they can do financial consultation so opportunities are again endless even mortgages based on metaverse real estate not the real estate on the metaverse real estate right because you know i you know i was reading the news and then you know i saw that a metaverse you know value of land in a metaverse doubled in a matter of you know couple of months so you know those can again be mortgage right so that is again a good opportunity and then the product launch events right so product launch events like you know for example apple had one right so those kind of events can be done on metaverse and will be done on metaverse and i don't think it's a matter of even you know years i suppose you know in a by next year or something you know at least you would see some you know product launches happening there there are they are happening right now as well but still you know on a very limited scale but i see that you know happening a lot and then you know coming on to media entertainment in public office first thing you know that comes to mind is real estate development you know develop property on virtual lands so that is happening and you know that's a very good example of you know what can be achieved then concerts and live events i know how hard it must be for all of us right uh, when we were booking our hotels especially around the global forum and with all those concerts happening wouldn't we have loved that you know some of those concerts were happening maybe you know virtually we would have easier gotten a you know nearby hotel right then you know tra trade shows exhibitions and then you know public private offices coming up you know uh, yesterday i was you know uh, listening to someone they were mentioning that you know there are you know players in the market who offer you office space where you can all sit together work together virtually and you know if you switch off you know and you can mention that you know it's a private conversation or a office conversation so that others can listen in right so there are you know so much innovations are happening then in terms of retail and cpg stores so in retail you know recently you know with the advent of nfts many of those you know uh, organization many of the retail players have launched nfts not for the purpose of selling those nfts but as a uh, you know as increasing customer connect or you know uh, customer you know in uh, what i would say uh, not connect but uh, engagement yes for you know getting customer engagement so they have launched you know many of the you know pizza players and you know others have launched nfts for their customers and then obviously you know uh, buying selling uh, or leasing products using crypto wallets so that's again you know one of the things now what are the problems what problems do we see in metaverse right now you know there are numerous metaverses everyone has their own way of working obviously you know uh, metaverse is a new thing so uh, the standards you know while there is a standards group but it is still you know quite early i suppose and uh, in the latest hype cycle you know gardner has put it at you know 10 years till it reaches maturity but otherwise you know in terms of you know uh, limitations to mention some of them would be centralized you know metaverses that you know lead to limited user experience because you know they numerous have come up but you know the opportunities for customers are still low right because you know there is still a central party to it who is controlling your experience so whatever they can think of whatever they can innovate you are limited by that right so but if it was truly decentralized think of the things that you could do and how many people could contribute to those experiences so that is one thing then non universal identities that you know we foresee as again a challenge so that is where you know i came up with this topic that you know we should do self sovereign identity because right now most of the metaverses they are relying on non universal identities if you want to come on my metaverse you know okay create an account here if you want to you know get on to the second metaverse create an account there so that's not really something that we would want to happen right so we would want that you know i create my identity and i use my identity everywhere it should be universal identity then you know siloed and less secure metaverse currencies so with in metaverse you know we spent a good fortune to buy those you know currency in there right and in most cases it may be even more than you know the US, a us dollar right so in that case we would want those currencies to be secure and it 
it's not always you know based on a blockchain right now we trust you know blockchain because you know it has proved itself it is you know computationally trustworthy right so that is where we trust blockchain right the consensus mechanism of blockchain so those metaverses you know some majority of them are still not you know blockchain based so that is where we see that you know there is a challenge then you know obviously interoperability so interoperability because you know this question i get from many customers and you know uh, even in the community that okay you know from the you know whoever is joining new that okay we are creating a, like i'm playing a gun you know i'm playing in a you know metaverse i got a gun why can't i use the same gun in my other you know metaverse right obviously you know you can't do that and there are there is logic behind it but you know no one is stopping you know from uh, anyone from asking a question so essentially you know I, i always tell them yes you know you got a gun in but you spent good amount of time playing a game and that's how you got that gun and if you take that gun on to the other you know game then you know how would they decide that which level you know you should be able to use how would they be able to decide so yes you know those kind of things would always remain but essentially but if you know, someone wanted to take that as a decoration and put it in their house in a different metaverse so what's stopping them why not right so that is definitely you know one of the things that you know interoperability you know could help them do and then privacy and data security so privacy and data security in terms of right now you know what i am doing whatever my behavior is in metaverse gets collected and then based on that my persona is created you know obviously you know, as i mentioned ai is one of the important components which tells you that how i will react to a certain situation but it's not always good that you know it gets noted so it has to be based on my consent it has to be based on numerous other factors so those factors of privacy and data security are still lacking at this point so these are some of the challenges so we tried of you know uh, to look at you know okay some of the challenges exist but can we solve them using blockchain can we solve them using a custom solution so that is where you know we see you know the first question is is blockchain really required when it comes to metaverse if you ask me definitely you need blockchain and without blockchain i you know don't perceive it as metaverse i still perceive it as you know an immersive experience or you know an ar vr application because you need blockchain that's where it becomes metaverse you need web 3.0 to fuel that metaverse so that is you know our, our opinion right so i'll you know take that you know uh, point by point first of all what metaverse needs meta you know the first thing that i said you know it is based on a centralized infrastructure based on you know that application so that means that you know it was limited but if it is decentralized it can go beyond so that is where you need need blockchain because blockchain provides you that you know decentralized nature just like in you know, a real world you know you need you know self control identity web3 can provide you that self controlled identity you need blockchain for that provide that secure and trustworthy money to run virtual economy blockchain you know based tokens are trusted because you know it it goes to certain consensus mechanisms and they have proved themselves right then every asset can be traced identified and its ownership be tracked so that is what you know we need uh, uh, from a metaverse correct so blockchain again you know in terms of supply chain in terms of nft blockchain has proved itself that is where we believe that you know blockchain is required when you want to do metaverse okay so i'll start with the solution approach that you know how we foresee that you know the your solution should be the very first should be your you have to lay down a foundation i know 100% decentralization is still a utopia and i'm presenting that utopia but part of it we should aim for right so my all my thought is that we should design with with that design with the approach in mind which would be that utopia maybe we don't have the tools right now it's okay to not have all the tools right now but you should have lay down the foundation so that tomorrow when you want to move you should be able to move first is you know you should have decentralized foundation so that would mean that you know for any you know true metaverse the blaze platform has to be decentralized right so whatever you know decentralized mechanism that you can use you can use blockchain 
right? So you can use you know uh, things like you know uh, even your peer-to-peer -peer, you know file systems. So those things you know we should rely on as our you know decentralized foundation. Then on top it should be decentralized identity, again based on blockchain. And then you know comes the metaverse part that you know where the metaverse is now ready, where you have your AR, VR, your AI, but to fuel those transactions, you again need tokenomics that comes from blockchain. So this is the approach that you know uh, we have taken when it comes to metaverse. I'll explain you how you know I per perceive this, how to implement it. That part also you know I'm going to cover in the upcoming slides. But what are the you know hyperledger projects or tools that we believe can help us? The very first one is hyperledger fabric. It, it is an you know, open source initiative that builds trust because you know first thing that you need is you should be able to trust say, okay whatever has been written right so if it is a closed blockchain that you know no you know you, you don't have the code then you know that means you you trust it less it doesn't necessarily have to be free but it has to be open source so that you know it builds that level of trust in what has been written right the second part is Purpose built for you know varied enterprise needs. It has to be purpose built. It should not be that you know I'm using a blockchain that was meant for something else and I'm trying to do something else with that. So that should not be a case. Then you know uh, Hyperledger Fabric is by far a leader when it comes to enterprise blockchain implementations. So that's why you know I chose Hyperledger Fabric. Then the second part is Hyperledger Indie. Again a purpose built solution. Again an open source start, right? So it provides you that decentralized identity. And it was meant for that. It was exclusively built for that purpose of providing you decentralized identity. So that is where you know, we choose Indy. And third is Aries. So Aries came out of Indy. You know, Aries was you know, initially part of Indy. Aries, Ursa, and Indy all were one. But then you know, uh, we bifurcated them. You know, we decoupled them. But I said from, and that spanned from uh, the idea that Aries should act as a wallet for not just for your Indian identity requirements, for other blockchains as well. So that was the idea behind Aries, right? So that is where we have picked Aries and you know took it to the next level, where it can not only deal with your identity but also with your tokens. So we'll talk about that in the upcoming slides. But before that, you know, we'll talk about you know what all we use, right? Uh, again, you know, uh, some of the things, you know, I'll be repeating. Uh, Hyperledger Indie, you know, purposefully built for identity, decentralized identity. So we are using that. The second is, you know, we created an IP for tokenization. So that IP, you know, so this tokenization solution is compatible with multiple blockchains, right? So Hyperledger Fabric being one of them for your tokenomics, all the token transactions, be it your fungible tokens, non-fungible tokens, your utility tokens, your access tokens, or even your data tokens. So it can take care of that part, right? So because right now, if I look at the hype, you know, people know about, you know, non-fungible tokens a lot. Although, you know, many of you sitting here, although, you know, you know about, you know, fungible tokens as well, which are equivalent to your fiat currency. Then we have our utility tokens. So if you own a token, that means you can get that service, right? So they are meant for that. So for example, you buy a subscription. Let's suppose you get a subscription for Netflix, right? So that subscription essentially can be translated into a token. And if you possess it, that would mean that you can access you know, Netflix services. The fourth point would be, fourth type of token is your data token, where you see that you know, uh, when we walk into uh, maybe a hotel, sometimes you know, they take you know, a copy of your credit card for their you know, needs, right? Uh, for their office records. So that definitely is a place you know, where your data and sensitive data becomes vulnerable. So that is where banks and other institutions have, are investing into data tokens. So that when you have to store that information, you only store the token, not the data linked with that token. And data resides somewhere secure in a secure place. But whatever you wanted to do with that sensitive data, you could still do with that token but token will ex, you know, not expose all the details, but give you that utility. So that is where data tokens are quite important right? for that abstraction. Then Aries wallet. You know, so it is now not Aries anymore. It is now Aries Plus, which means that it can handle your identity and token requirements. And it will integrate with 
multiple blockchains, not just you know uh, Hyperledger Indy. And then cross-platform, you know, connectivity. As I mentioned, that with Aries we, Plus, we will get, you know, uh, connectivity to multiple blockchain engines, not just one. And then the thought process behind this solution that you know we call Metafinity, it's about you know applicability across multiple universes, creating avatar as a service. So uh, I'll show you a demo where we, uh, you know, I, you know, where we created an avatar for me as well bit more here but yes uh, you know it, it's still me and then you know uh, architected as a composition of reusable components right so these were the you know thought process this was the thought process that we had in mind when we built that solution now as i mentioned specialized blockchains that fit the purpose so you have your users on one end you know they are interacting with uh, the aries wallet this is the Aries Plus wallet where you have Aries, but you know it is taking care of your identity and token needs. It could be your you know personal smartphone or a device, or it could be a web agent, right? Then you know uh, for identity, you have your identity blockchain specifically built for purpose. Then you have your token and transaction ledger blockchains. It could be Fabric, it could be Corda, Corum, or even Ethereum. The possibilities are endless, but they all were built in a different way, right? Hyperledger Fabric works in a completely different manner from how Ethereum works. Same goes for Corda. Corda has a completely different architecture, completely different outlook when it comes to blockchain, right? But Aries Plus, that's why we call it Aries Plus, it can connect with all these different platforms and give you, still give you the power of Indy. It can connect all of them using Indy. It could be a scenario where you're using all of them. You could be using all of them. Maybe you know not with within single metaverse, but maybe with different metaverses, having the one identity coming from Indy and connecting all of your metaverses being you know used in different uh, blockchain protocols at the bottom. So this uh, is a double click of the same image, but here we are talking about not uh, we have taken the example of Indy Aries and Fabric with metaverse. So I left out the part of you know of rest of the blockchains. So concentrating here, you would see that at the bottom, at the base, which is common, which is Hyperledger Indy. And then on top, you have your metaverse, right? And that metaverse is using Hyperledger Fabric. Now you could replace Hyperledger Fabric with any other blockchain, but Indy will remain your constant. That will be your identity. Your identity has to be common. Rest things you know, can change. What tokens we, who is offering on which blockchain doesn't really matter. What matters is if you have one identity, if I am one person, which shop I walk into doesn't really matter, right? So that is the idea behind this one. And then we have Aries Plus. This is, you know, the Aries wallet, right? Aries Plus wallet. It has, at the bottom, it has Hyperledger Aries, all the features which it has, you know, it's direct integration with Hyperledger Indy. And in addition to that, we have built, you know, various plugins. Uh, for the purpose. For example, for Fabric, there is a plugin specific for Fabric. For Corda, there is an authorization plugin. GoCoram, again, you know, there is an authorization plugin and custodial wallet integration for your public blockchain requirements. So that is what, you know, we've built into this. And, that, you know, this is how, you know, we see that a solution for a metaverse can be built. Now, for example, you know, if I talk about GoCoram, Gokoram has a you know feature for multi you know for multi tenancy where you can have you know one server being used by multiple enterprises right so that is what they have multi tenancy you know so that can be connected using this wallet via a authorization server if you talk about Corda again the same logic you know could be that that you know you can connect using your OAuth technologies, you can connect to that authorization server using this wallet, and then, you know, that it gets connected to your Corda node, right? It, it could, you could be using accounts in Corda, right? So that is what, you know, you could do with this. Now, how it happens? How will it happen? How will a flow of transaction happen in this case? So first of all, as an Aries wallet user, let's suppose I'm there. So what I'll do is I'll connect with Hyperledger Indy, Right, so that part is given. I'll you know connect with an organization. Let's say you know I have in you know, a relationship with a bank. Let's for the sake of example, let's call it old bank. So there is an old bank you know where I'm a, an existing customer. I can walk up to them and I can you know get verified credentials from them. 
how it happens i'll install an application on my mobile phone that would be the my mobile agent using that i'll establish a relationship with that old bank and obviously you know i would have maybe a portal where i can log in to that bank application and they would have a you know option for you know, say block kyc that you know blockchain based kyc i'll click over there and you know they'll give me a qr code i scan it my relationship is established on the indi wall on this aries wallet i request for credentials they send me i accept it right the job done i get my verifiable credentials that's the first part second is how do i connect with hyperledger fabric so that's what happens as in the next step where the bank or the metaverse is also connected with indi they have also published their public did on indi they have given you an option okay how you can connect with me so i connect with that bank on that using aries and indi platform till now fabric is not there but the moment my credentials are verified by the new bank or maybe you know the bank at the metaverse completely different bank call it a new bank once they are, they have been established then they can you know register me with fabric and then aries wallet would now hold the key aries wallet will hold my certificate so that you know i can sign the transactions aries wallet will have that right not with the bank not with anyone else but my wallet in my mobile mobile will have that you know key and then once that is that part is done then next part is i want to buy an nft so what i'll do is i'll walk into that bank i'll say i want to buy this nft or or maybe i'm not walking into a bank may you know maybe walking virtually right i'm still sitting at my home but getting the feel that i'm walked into a bank i want to buy a nft so that a bank will create a pro draft proposal of a transaction and send to my aries wallet they will hit me and then you know once i have received that okay you know if i want to buy i need to approve it i need to sign this transaction so that is what aries will do and send it directly to fabric and once the fa hyperledger fabric has received your transaction we are you know a client then your transaction happens and you get that you know nft so this is how you know we perceive that you know the solution for metaverse can be done using hyperledger indi metaverse and fabric this is how aries connects all of them so for some of you you know uh, getting bit more you know into detail of how it happens technically so first part is a transaction has to be initiated so aries wallet you know using that you know hyperledger fabric plugin would initiate a transaction that would say okay i want to buy this nft it would have those details then you know a transaction proposal would be created a proposal gets signed unsigned transaction comes to us that transaction gets you know sent back so it's a three step process you know at least so then the after you know i have initiated that yes I've, after i've given my you know uh, consent that i want to do this so then a transaction you know is created a uh, submitted then finally you know i have to sign the you know committed signed committed transaction has to flow into hyperledger fabric and finally you would have your nft it may be you know a bit more detail than you know the business you know session at the <laughs> hall you know set but yes so this is how it happens coming on to key benefits again you know repeating the same thing that it is trustworthy unique and universal ssi which i have been talking about then you know the transparency and decentralization is a must when you are creating a you know metaverse it has to be secure it has to be that uh, trustworthy it has to be fraudless right so that is where we need blockchain and finally it has to be it is a immutable proof of digital ownership so i don't want to you know spend millions of dollars buying an nft in tomorrow figuring out oh sorry i made a mistake or there was a hack at that you know a place so i lost my nft so you don't want to do that right so that is where you know you need blockchain and it can be easily done via blockchain nothing to prove there right and then finally you know what were the key challenges and takeaways so key first challenge was there was no out of the box solution available to connect you know these different uh, blockchains to a uh, hyperledger aries right so aries is there it connects with indi beautifully there are you know certain people who have done some you know uh, experiments on it connected with with fabric but we need a common solution a standard solution that was not there so you know we had to come up with that approach okay how to, you know it's about you know inventing the wheel i don't know if i reinvented it but still you know i i would consider inventing a wheel then the second part is you know creating those plugins and connectors that are required 
Again, you know, the standardization does not exist at the moment. So we created a design, and obviously you know, it can go through you know, several evolvement cycle, but otherwise you know, we created that design and it works. I'll show you a you know, working demo of the same. Then you know, different skill set required for different blockchains. Hyperledger Fabric, if I'm working, I need you know, maybe Java, Go, or not JS. I move on to Corda, I need Kotlin or Java again. If I move on to Ethereum, I need Solidity. If I move on to GoCorum, again, you know, I need Solidity and Go. So with each blockchain, you know, the skill set required is different. So that is, you know, again, you know, one of the challenges you one could face. And finally, extending Aries. So Aries has a key management solution in built, right? Aries manages your key when it already. So extending that to manage, you know, your other keys. So for example, if I'm working with, let's suppose, Ethereum, I'm connecting Aries with Ethereum, so how would it go about? I would need to manage that key. I could use a custodial wallet, and with custodial wallet, you know, they give you that feature that, okay, you know, you need three keys to actually do a transaction, while, you know, two of the keys may be kept with the custodial pro custody provider, and you need one key. Obviously, you'll have a master key. So, so you, you know, save that, you know, key, your part of the key, in the Aries wallet. So that is how you, know, you can go about it. Then you know, uh, takeaways, obviously you know, metaverse is the future. You know, uh, some may say that you know, it may take a you know, few years to, be, to materialize, but definitely it is something that businesses or enterprises cannot live without. When I say enterprise, I don't just mean you know, your e-commerce portals or your retail chains, even your you know, social media apps, right? So they, can't, they also can't live without metaverse because you know, we have tasted the you know, metaverse and now we can't live without. Then you, know, you need, uh, then obviously, a blockchain-based platform. Blockchain-based, not just the tokens, but the identity as well. So both go hand in hand, then you know, that's how we know we will trust the system. And finally, Hyperledger projects like you know, Indy, Aries, Ursa, and Fabric, you know, those are definitely the ones you know, that are worth mentioning, that they provide you that solution that you know, we are looking for and the trust. And again, you know, because you know, Hyperledger Fabric has you know, about 45%, more than 45% of enterprise blockchain share. So that means if you're building something using Hyperledger stack, it's easier to, you know, to connect with multiple enterprises because your you know, horizon will be big. You'll be able to adapt to multiple enterprises because they were already, would have already been using you know, Hyper, one of the Hyperledger stack. Right? So that is about, you know, uh, the presentation. I'll move on to the demo part. Just give me a sec. Case for Digital First Bank. Please select avatar of your choice and enter into the virtual world to experience Hello, welcome to Digital First Bank. I want to open a digital account with DFB. I want it both crypto asset account and regular fiat currency account. Please select an appropriate service you wish to avail from the screen. So here we wanted to do both. Like uh, when I'm opening an account, I wanted both parts. I wanted, you know, the crypto account as well as my regular savings account. Thank you. Please wait a while. I will get an RM to assist you shortly. Just believe me or not, this is me. This relationship manager, a bit more here. Welcome Gino. You have made a wise choice to opt for our Crypto Plus account which offers a digital savings account and a crypto wallet. We also support Block KYC credentials which allows you to get onboarded with us instantly. Please click on the appropriate option on the display panel on your right to know more. The goal is, you know, our identity solution. So, 
user has to download an app, scan a QR code and you know... Block KYC credentials code. issued by your last employer are required to fast track KYC process. Please proceed to the kiosk in the lobby to proceed. So now, you know, user has an option. Do they want to do regular KYC which may take 3 to 5 days or they want to get on board quickly. So they're providing, you know, if they're KYC backend process so initiated. So they can receive that QR code and, you know, offline go and scan it, right? So that part is still required. So there is no solution at the moment to, you know, do that. To play with your mobile within the... Your metaverse. KYC verification is complete. Welcome to DFB. We have triggered a reward of DFB token as a token of welcome gift you can redeem them in participating avenues. So you can see the account balance is there. You could see account balance as well as your crypto balance there. The user receives the notifications that your account has been credited with USD $20,000. So because it's a savings account, someone, you know, uh, using their old bank, you know, they sent $20,000 to this new account. So that gets credited. You can see the Obol coin balance. Obol is, you know, our plat platform for tokenization. So Obol coin balance is nil. This is the wallet ID. And this is your NFT count because bank had issued one NFT, right? So that is where, you know, it currently stands. Now user would want to buy something, you know. Using the amount credit in his account, he does a transfer of USD $10,000 from his account. So $10,000 worth, you know, transferred from savings account to the crypto wallet to the Obol coin balance, one USD. The user uses the wallet amount to purchase NFT worth 1,000 Obol coins. So the NFT is to Obol coin balance goes to 9,000. The unification of blockchain so and the metaverse idea. presence opportunities for various line of businesses. Time to prepare this, Block KYC yeah. is just scratching the surface. Thank you for watching. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yes, please. Uh, so here in the European Union, there is quite a big group for the customer and the MMV ticks, which are regulations really. Um, it, how do you view that? Do you, will you adhere to these regulations? So, uh, uh, right now, I'm not 100% sure, you know, of those requirements, but yes, uh, because, you know, blockchain is being implemented, and even, you know, with Hyperledger Indy, even within European Union, we are doing some, you know, uh, things on, around identity. So some of our customers within European Union, you know, they are playing with this, and, you know, they are experimenting with it. So, and, you know, the purpose has been achieved. The legal aspect is, you know, we are still going through that part. So we'll get to know more, uh, you know, soon. Yes, please. Yeah, you talk about some uh, key challenges. Yes. And uh, there will be some difficulties. Yes. On how to connect uh, all blockchains, all different types of blockchains. And mm -hmm. do you think uh, we will have to wait for standards first in order to come up with some, do so come up with some interoperability if among the blockchains? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, please, please finish. Yeah, that's what I'm talking okay. about standards. So standards, I believe, yes, you know, standards are important. Yeah, in order for all blockchains to enter operability. Yes, operability. correct. So essentially standards are definitely important, but I suppose that utility will drive those standards. If we wait for standards to come and then, you know, go on to utility, standards will not evolve because, you know, it that, you know, demand from customers that, right? So that drives innovation. So that is where my belief is that, yes, you know, right now if I talk about interoperability, it is there to uh, some extent, some degree it is already there in terms of, you know, parachains, relay chains, side chains, and also bridges, right? So they are allowing you to do that. But yes, it's it has not achieved a place where you could call that, yes, it has been, you know, matured and standardized. It will take a while before we reach there. But that will not stop, but that should not stop us from innovating and, you know, using that. Because that is what will drive more innovation into it, and that requirement will drive those standards. Otherwise, you know, as you know, that most of the technologies were built because there was a demand, huge demand, and businesses could not live without, so they had to develop those standards. So I believe, you know, that way, you know, it would work out. Yes. 
Yes, please. Uh, the Ares Plus uh, plugins that you're developing or have developed, are they open source or are they proprietary? Uh, right now they're proprietary, yes. Do you have plans to make them open source? Well, I'm working on them, <laughs> yes. Because as I said, you know, the trust would come from that you know, open source part, right? So yes. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, thank you all.